I lost my batteries this morning. That's, I'm trying to decide. I'm on now. Praise God. How good to see all of you. We're going to talk about something today a bit on the benefit package that you have with, with Christ Jesus in your salvation package. You have a benefit in it, and we're going to talk about it. And I'm going to tell you this morning, uh, I'm going to preach in a lot from my fly leaf this morning. Um. I want you to take a look at this. Uh, this is what I have in, in my fly leaf, okay? Uh, so Job twenty two twenty eight says, and you don't have to go there. I'm just telling you what's in my fly leaf. I declare he establishes. The Bible said God told Job, you declare a thing and it will be established. You declare a thing. And it will be established. Okay? What did Job declare? Huh? He declared, maybe not in his word so much, but he declared in his actions fear. A fear that maybe, by some chance, my children might fall away from God. I'm going to go make sacrifices. And made sacrifices out of fear of what might happen and he opened the door and established fear in his life. Now, fear is the absolute opposite of love. Love cast out fear. Who is love? What is love? God. The translation of God is love. God is love, the Bible says. So if you cast, if you decide to choose fear, then you have chosen to eliminate God. They're opposing factors. If God comes into the situation, fear dissipates, okay? Because love, perfect love, which is God, cast out fear. But Job decided to establish fear. He decided to declare fear out of his actions, out of his motivations. Everything he did was a subject of establishing fear. He was declaring it in his life. He was fearful for his children. He was fearful for his land. He was fearful for his health. He was fearful for his, his, his marriage. When he opened the access door, see, Satan stood before God and said, I'm looking for somebody. And God said, well, you know, Job's there. You can't beat Job. Where how Job's name even come up? Job had opened the access door. God did not put that on. He didn't release. He didn't just turn Satan loose and go, go get him. Job lifted the hedge of protection in his life by declaring fear. And everything we declare on this earth, because we're made in the image of God, God stands behind it and he backs it and it is established in here. Why do bad things happen to good people? There's an answer. There's an answer. And you've got to, you've got to understand you're better off saying nothing at all. Go back there and put your head against the brick wall for a little while if that's what you've got to do to get rid of it. You know how it just it comes over, you just got to say something? Shut up. Shut up up you hold the keys to every door accessible in your life and the keys are your are in your tongue 
And out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak and it will be established to you. God is in control through you. Heard somebody say the other day, well, I hope God has his heart and, and eyes on this next election. I hope, I hope God somehow moves and does. I hope it's his will. I just, you gomer pile Christian. You know, and Sergeant Carter is probably your pastor. You know, my God, isn't, isn't, have you even opened up this thing? That's why you're better off. If you don't know, keep your mouth shut till you find out. Ask questions. The first person to ask is him. And he'll begin to access and open up and because he, what you're doing now is you're giving him glory. And every time you give him glory, he shows up. And you give him glory just by asking questions. Because when you're asking questions to him, what you're saying is, I don't know, but I know you do. And I give reverence to you and I establish you as most important in my life. And because you're most important in my life, and I believe you above everything else and everyone else, I know that you will give me access to what you know. And then he says, what he, the Bible tells us that he establishes it, uh, it, it, it through, through the mouth of two or three witnesses, and it's established here on earth. So what's he going to do when you ask a question? He's got people around you, and you, as you begin to inquire and seek out, he's going to bring two or three witnesses to you and, and, and establish something in your life that you can speak now. Okay? And then when you speak it, then God's will is being operated and, 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 and poured out into the earth. Okay? But always ask him first and, and seek the word in it because some people, they don't operate by the word. They operate by emotions. And they'll give you an emotional thought. We call that a brain. We all know what that is. And so they give you that, and all it does is it, is it, is it, it you know, it, it, it clouds the situation, and it gives you a faith failure, okay? And so I'm going to talk to you today about one of these benefits that you have. Now, that, that's a benefit right there, okay? But I'm gonna, uh, that's not what I'm going to talk about today. I'm just talking to you about my fly leaf. That's the kind of stuff I keep in front of me. The really important stuff I put in the fly leaf, you know. The, the next page of fly leaf is my worth. I have my worth, my worth all written out there. Because i got to keep my worth in front of me all the time, Julie. If I don't, I forget what I'm worth. How many of you forget? How many? Come on, am I the only one that forgets who, what they're worth once in a while? People and circumstances are the only things in this life that Satan can work through. And he will work through people and circumstances. And the first thing he does is he tries to overwhelm you and with your self-worth that you're not worth that much. Okay? Because if he can get you focused on the people or get you focused on the circumstance, those two things, if you're, you, that takes you out of focus of who you are. And then the next thing you're doing is you're trying to fix it. Hmm? Okay. So I have to keep that before me all the time. Go with me over to Romans. One of the greatest benefits you have, one of the greatest benefits you have in this thing is in Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, amazing benefit you have. And if you know how to access this benefit, it, it, what it's going to do for you, you, will just not, you just won't believe. You won't believe what this will do for you. This benefit basically is the foundation benefit for everything that God has accessed for you. And this benefit right here that I'm going to talk to you about is, is where we get muddy in the church. I, I call it preachers peeing in the upstream. You know, you, you see it in the Bible where the priest got out there and they peed upstream. And downstream the people were drinking the water. 
I'm just a real preacher, okay? I'm, not, I'm, I'm sorry for all those out there who are watching this later on. I make no apologies. I'm just real, okay? This pulpit does not elevate us to a place where we're above everybody else. We just have more responsibility than everybody else by stepping up in it. But it doesn't make us greater than anybody else. And we forget sometimes that we're talking to real people who have real issues, dealing with real things, and we get up here with a lot of fake church language, trying to pull you in to, to this. And you live in a society of real... We, you know, too many that stand behind this pulpit live in the office or the golf course where their buddies are at that speak the same language. Okay? But the bottom line is we get up here and we stand before real people and we've got to speak their language and help them understand we are the ambassadors for this word. And it's time to quit going upstream, taking a leak and letting them drink it. That's your opinion, your ideas, your, and, and, and your poor self-worth. Let's give them the water of God's word. Let them drink from that. Amen? So here I'm going to get into one because this, this, is, this is the dirtiest that it gets inside church. All right? Are you ready? Because this is as dirty as it gets. And it is, I'm sick and tired of, 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 the, of the dirty water. Okay? I'm going to pronounce something to you that is in your benefit package, and it is, it is the foundation of the rest of the benefits. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. For sin, everybody say sin. sin. It's a dirty word. Everybody's involved and nobody wants to talk about it. For sin shall not, everybody say with me, sin shall not. You've got to get that established in your heart. Sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Amen. Now I'm going to tell you something. The reason I say this is muddy in every church is they want to get up and talk about sin. And they want to get you focused on sin. I listened to one the other day. Somebody sent me a video. When I got done listening to the video, I wanted, I wanted to get at the guy who was preaching, and then I wanted to get at the guy who sent me the video. Because what we need today is humility. We need to be humble. The sin of humility, the sin of, the sin of pride is what's... When I get a picture of who God is and who I am and all that he has done for me, See, when he's preaching that message, he's building up more pride and 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 uh, and, and uh, selfish thoughts, self-centered thoughts the whole time he's preaching that. Because the more we preach about your lack of 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 of, of humility, the more we think about we cause you to think about you. And the more we cause you to think about you, the more self-thinking and self-centered and selfish you become. 
And then you begin to compare yourself to others. Because in a message like that, you can't help but do, you, all you got left is to pre- compare others. But when you get your mind and heart and and you get your focus on Christ and all that he did for you, now if that doesn't humble you, huh? Of where you were headed, who you were, what you were, the way you acted and what he's done for you, the way he picked you up, cleaned you up, turned you around, gave you hope, gave you health, gave you a life, repaired your relationships, everything he's done. I can't turn around. I don't have a thought that he's not in it. Everything I have, I owe to him. Everything I do and get to do, I owe to him. Everything I ever will be, I owe to him. Everything I've ever been, I owe to him. Everything I'll ever have, I owe to him. Every relationship I have, I owe to him. Every bit of health, every time I set my feet on the, on the floor, I owe to him. You talk about dedicated to him. I don't have to try to get dedicated to him by reading the Bible more, by praying more. I'm already dedicated to him. He's done the most for me in my life. There's nobody can come close to what he's done for me. And the one who does the most for you, and see, he's done the most for everyone. We just don't bring an acknowledgement of it and bring a focus on it. The more we focus on that, the more humility comes into the room. From the heart, not from works, but from, from a desire on the inside to know him more. Be drawn to him closer. Amen? Establish this. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Do you know why habitual sin, uh, areas of your life that you don't want everybody to know about, there, there's things that you have that you're dealing with. Do you know why you continue to deal with them? Because they become the focus point in your life. You think about them every single day. Sometimes at, you don't go but hours, maybe an hour or two a day without thinking about this thing in your life and you would like to see it removed. Okay? And I'm telling you today... The only bondage that you have to that thing is your focus because sin no longer has dominion over you. I believe in evil spirits. I believe in satanic. I believe in all that. I believe in all that, you know, <clears throat> demonic influence and, 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 and I believe in demon possession. Okay, I'm not saying that. I, you say this out there and it goes out there on that video or out there in the audio and and people begin to assume oh well he's saying that there's none of that yes there is that but what I'm saying to the blood bought blood washed child of God I had somebody try to argue with me well a, a Christian can have a demon spirit I'm just telling you well a Christian can have whatever he wants because he's got dominion you want a fellowship with Christian with with demons had one guy say, oh, I'm in a dry place. Well, the Bible says that Satan is the one that hangs out in arid and dry places. Why don't you quit hanging out there? You have the choice. Boy, he didn't like that. Quit hanging out with Satan. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about places you go. I'm talking about places you go. Okay? You get this straightened out and your physical will straighten out itself. We're trying to straighten out the physical in the church. We want to shut down the bars and we want to shut down the porn. We want to shut down this. We want to shut down that. Why don't you get on another agenda? Why don't you start building up Christ Jesus? All men will draw to him and that will automatically shut down all the rest that you're wanting to see shut down. It's real easy. It takes money to keep a business open. If nobody's addicted anymore, they don't get any more money. If there's no more money, guess what they do? It goes with any special interest. But the more we focus on our, 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 our inadequacies, the more we're drawn to them. 
The more we're drawn to them, the more you're thinking about it, the more you're giving easement to their access. The way to shut the door is you've got to change your mind about that. You are not, you are not in bondage to sin. Sin does not have dominion over you. Say it with me. Sin does not have dominion over me. Now, you know, you just spoke life. You spoke the word. You're speaking the word over. Yeah, but I just did. It doesn't matter. I just thought. It doesn't matter. It, I just, I'm, I'm walking through the door to do, but it doesn't matter. You proclaim the truth over you. See, that's what, that is what true faith is. Speaking those things that are not as though they were. Hello? Speaking those things that are not as though they were. Well, you've got to get that straightened out before you can even do that. No, you don't. No, you don't. You're a child of God. You can speak the word of God over yourself. Matter of fact, the time to do it is right after you've messed up or right before you did mess up or while you're messing up. You, that's the time to say, when you got that cigarette in your hand, you want that, you want that bondage broken in your life? I'm going to talk to you about what sin really is. Smoking a cigarette is not sin. Drinking is not sin. Sex without the covenant of marriage is not the sin. Those are all exhausts of sin. It's, we're, trying to, we're trying to put a potato in the tailpipe to stop the exhaust. And we're not fixing the engine. Because our engine, we don't know anything about engines, that's why. Huh? We're standing behind the pulpit. We don't know anything about engines. That's why we don't want to fix the engine. We don't even know what the problem is. All we know is you people need to quit doing it. And I'm going to let you know you're going to hell. Okay? You're going to hell. If I, if I scare you enough with the flames of hell, you'll quit doing it. No, you won't. Do you know this nation went into absolute chaos with its housing uh, loan network Sally May, all of them went nuts in 2008. Do you know why they went nuts? Because a, a, a mass amount of brokers went out and sold home loans that were flexible, flexible interest rates. And they explained flexible interest rates to those buyers. And they were going out buying hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of homes because they could purchase them at the interest rate at that moment for the price of a home like I live in. That sounds like a good deal. But there was a ramification. There's a possibility. Now, we're not going to say it's going to guarantee, but, you know, it's more than likely going to happen. Interest rates are going to go up. And when they go up, your, your adjustment is going to, it's going to adjust your rate. And people were in a few a year or two later, people were getting moved out of their homes. You saw them on the news. I don't know what we're going to do. The average home, average homeowner. My God, who told you you could afford a $250,000 home? Who can, a broker convinced you. And now my payment's going to be $1,200 and I can't afford it. I want everybody to feel sorry for you. You signed the note on a flexible interest loan. That means they can come in behind you and change it on you. And today you can afford it and tomorrow you can't. And it doesn't matter how many times you tell somebody there is a payment at the end, they'll get in it anyway because it looks good now. So telling them that, you know, uh, drinking that beer, you're going to get your kidney or your, your liver or you're smoking that cigarette, you're going to, or, or it's doing what you're doing, you're going to hell. Yeah, but it's fun now. You're never going to convince them. It almost put this nation on its knees. And it didn't matter because at the time I can live in a home and I can show everybody, look at where I live. Look at the neighborhood I live in. Aren't, we are just, oh, look at us, who we are now. We live in a castle. Yeah, in six months they're coming to get your castle. Yeah, but I got a castle. And it might not happen. You know, it might not. You know what? Hell's real. 
And the message that when men go there, they can never get out, that's real. That's all true. You're born again, and you, and, 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 and you are constantly doing things, addicted, caught up, can't get away from things that are destroying you as a Christian. You're going to heaven. You're a child of God. You're going to heaven. But you're, you're connected with something and, or things, and you can't get away from it. And you're wondering, why can't I be delivered? There's an answer. And the delivery is free. And the first thing you've got to get established in your mind, it doesn't matter how hard the addiction may feel, sin shall not have dominion over you. Now, what is sin? See, we've got to get to what sin is. Sin. All right. First of all, let's go to Romans chapter 6. Oh, we're already in Romans chapter 6. How about verse 23? How about verse 23? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Eternal life, meaning the moment you met him, John, life began. And everything that you will ever attain in heaven is accessible to you on earth. Jesus told the disciples that whatever you've done for this kingdom, you're going to be rewarded for in heaven and here on earth. Okay? So we have to understand that life began the moment we accepted Christ's work on the cross. See, that's what you did. You accepted Christ's work on the cross. All right? And he, and he, see, see, what, where sin began was what we talked about earlier. Where sin began was there was a point in time when humanity said, I will choose my own access for knowledge over the knowledge that God can give me. I will choose my knowledge over his. That took glory. Why do you think they lost the glory? They were clothed in glory, right? They had clothes. They didn't run around naked. They ran around naked after they chose theirs over his. You want to you get the glory out of the house? Choose yours over his. And the glory departs immediately. Choose his over yours and the glory is yours. Amen. The glory will never depart from you. If you always stop to say, wonder what God, how, how would God, what, what's Papa say about this? How's Papa feel about this? Where's Papa standing? At the moment, you're always accessing to every question, every circumstance, every person, every, every challenge in your life, you refer to God, the glory will always be in the house. You will always be full clothed in the glory. You will always be, be, be covered in the glory. You will always walk through the glory cloud, even though you can't see it. If you could just be stepped away just a moment and be able to see everything in the spiritual instead of the natural, you would see the glory follows before you. The glory, when you sit down in your office, the glory just fills the room. Amen. No wonder people favor you. They like you and don't even know why, because the glory... You get access and you don't even know why you get access to the glory. The Shekinah glory is all over you because of your choice to choose his thinking over mine. Wow. Okay. This is grace. This is unadulterated, unperverted grace. Watch this. The wages of sin. There is a wage of sin, but the 
gift of God is life. The wages of sin are death. Now, what is sin? Let's go to John. Let's go to the guy who is the prophet of love. John is the minister of love. You're going to listen to anybody talk about sin. John's the guy you want to talk to because he's going to do it through the avenue and the, and the, the vision of love. You don't want to get somebody talking to you about sin who has not accessed God's love because it will always come out condemning. It will always come out self-focused. It'll always go out, you got to do something else. You got to, you got to do this. You got to do that. It, it, sin has no dominion over you and you did nothing for that to happen except, except Christ Jesus as your personal savior. It is not about self-righteousness. It is not about works. It is not about what you can do. It's not about a list of things for you to accomplish. This has to do with receiving. Okay? Now watch this. 1 John 3, starting with verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. There is your focus. Behold what manner of love that the Father has bestowed. He's just bestowed it upon you. No earning. He just lavished it on you. And he proved it by incarnating himself into a human being and laying his life down just for you. That is now your worth. And love demanded that he did it. For God so loved the world that he gave. Well, why did he give? To straighten you out. Why did he give? Because I need you to do something for me. I need something done on the earth. See, when you get that messed up in your head, it's all about works. He doesn't heal you because salvation's all, healing is wrapped up in salvation. So he doesn't heal you so you can do something. He healed you simply because you're worth it. You're worth it. Who put the worth on you? Who put the price on you? Who decided what you're worth? He did. So why would he heal you? Because he loves you. Yeah, but no, just because he loves you. And because he chose to put a price on you. He chose the price. He established the price, he established the worth, and decided to pay it. Let's get the focus back on him. I think this is his church, I think this is his word, I think this is his thing. Let's get the focus back on him. Because see, we start focusing on that, man. You got me, I'm I'm, I'm in. You ever been sold out to a company? I've been sold out to a company before. They were so good to me, and every time I turned around, they were more good to me. I couldn't outdo how good they were to me. Matter of fact, I I stood in front of the owner one time, and when I walked past him in the hallway, he turned around and says, Dean Hammonds from Southern Illinois. Now, he didn't have a flash card. He did his flash cards before before I got there, and there was about 25 of us there for that, for, for that, that time in his offices. Stopped me in the office. He said, Dean Hammonds. The moment he called me by name, I went, wow. The owner of this great company that's worldwide, he's the man. He is the guy who, who made the products in his mama's kitchen and went door to door selling milk and ice cream in a horse and buggy and built this corporation from the ground up And he just called me by name and where I'm from and where he's sending me and said, I just want you to know, Mr. Hammonds. And then he calls me Mr. I love you. Can I give you a man hug? I'm yours. You understand? Wherever you want me to go, as long as it doesn't put me in jail, I'll do it, you know? Why? Because, because of how he treated me and the access and what he did for my family. He, he set it up where I had a free, my wife, I was able to give her, I was able to give her, 
came through. He gave me a name in their company, and through my name, my wife would get a free washer and a free dryer and a free, wa- uh, free dishwasher. And we didn't have a garbage disposal. I got a free garbage disposal. I got free tools. I got free stuff all the time. Clothing, all, just, all the time. This company was so good to me. It seemed like every time I had a need, all I had to do was pick up the phone and they'd find out a way to, to make it happen. And I'm just like, you're talking about sold out, baby. I was sold out. Where are you, you know? And I remember him looking at me and said, no, we're sending you down there to this location. If you fail, it will be our fault. Well, I'm even loving him even more. He said, the reason you're here today training is because if they fail out there in the field, it will be your fault. We are a, we are a house of accountability. I went, wow. I like accountability because I'm, I'm in charge, you know. Do you understand? That, that's, that's where I, that, that God used that in my life to say, hey, listen. I call you by name. Remember when God, when Jesus says, go get Peter and the disciples. Or go get the disciples and Peter. Who was the one that failed him the most in the last three days? Peter. But who was the one he called by name? Peter. Who was the first one to preach the gospel? Peter. How many people got saved? Over 3,000. <laughs> are you kidding me? Do you understand who you are in his life? And Peter being who Peter was, called him by name. What was Peter's reaction? He fell at the feet of Christ Jesus. I would call that humility from the heart, wouldn't you? It wasn't learned. It wasn't taught. Nobody said, hey, now, Peter, now before you get there. I know he's called you by name, but you need to bow your head. You need, you need to bow your knees when you get there in front of him. You have to tell Peter that. It was, it was driven from within to produce humility. It was driven from within. Amen? And, and so what, what I want to try to tell you today is is, is sin. I'm going to get to it. I don't have time today. But I want you to understand that sin is something you were born into. And now that Christ has saved you, next week we're going to go to the second part on this. Because it's, benef- it's the greatest benefit package you've ever had. And if you don't understand it, you'll always be tied up in your sin and you'll become a Christian retread. Now, when I call a Christian retread is someone who has to keep going to Christ and asking for forgiveness. You got to keep going to the altar. Now, you were saved. See, they kept trying to get me saved. I told you I was baptized in every watering hole in Christopher. Swimming pools, ponds, rivers, big muddy. I mean, I, I, I got baptized in, in several baptistries in town because our church didn't have a baptistry. And so they get permission to take me over there. I got baptized at youth camp. They tried to get me. You know, I'm surprised they didn't just hold me under. Because in their eyes, I wasn't saved. I hadn't accomplished it yet. And so it confused me, and I always had my thoughts and eyes on me, and I was still trying to figure out. And see, some of you go, oh, I know I'm saved. I'm not in that category. Yeah, you know you're saved, but do you know why you sin? I'm saved. Why do I keep falling into this? Why do I get, huh? See, I'm talking about the same thing. It doesn't matter how they keep you in a cycle. You're kept in a cycle. You're like the mouse you're like, the, you're, like the, you're like the little mouse in the cage and you can't get out. And see, he is set, whom the Son is set free is free indeed. You're free from the cage. You're free to come out and live. You're not stuck in that anymore. And something's telling you you are. And I'm going to spend some time with you in the next few weeks and I'm going to give you word and I'm going to give you proof and I'm going to give you something to stand on so that you can establish something in your life. You can declare something in your life differently than what you're seeing 
And if you can't be here, you make sure you get it on the, it'll be out there on video. It'll be out there on audio. You get this. I don't, see, it's not about your butts in the seat here. It's about getting the word in you so that you can live free. Because whom the Son is set free is free indeed, and you don't have to live like this, and you don't have to have 12 steps to this, 5 steps to this, 3 steps to this. It's not more works. Because I'm going to tell you, the high calling of Christ, and we're going to talk about that, but I'm going to give you a prelude to it. The high calling of Christ is receiving. Now, I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to show it to you. See, we thought the high calling was something else. No, the high calling is receiving. <laughs> and that puts everybody in the same boat. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. I love you today. But you know what's more important? He loves you today. And he called you by name. Amen?